This is the homework video guide for the energy chapter and for this very first problem we need to calculate the minimum work done when a 65 kilogram student climbs an 8 meter high stairway in 12 seconds. Okay, so if we look at the data here, the mass for this problem is a 65 kilogram student and the uh, the distance or the height that the student climbs is going to be 8 meters and this is going to be done in 12 seconds. Okay. So uh, we can definitely find work by using the work formula, which is force times distance. All right, so for this particular problem, we need to think about what the force is. And uh, this is going to be the force of gravity because uh, this person is climbing up a, uh, a vertical length here. So uh, the force that we'll be dealing with is the force of gravity times the distance. And finally, force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity and since we're climbing a vertical height I'll uh, change the distance to a height. Okay and then from there on we just kind of insert the numbers in here so we have a mass of 65 kilograms the acceleration due to gravity is 9.80 and the height for this problem is going to be 8 and uh, once we go to our calculator and once we uh, compute this particular answer here we get 5096 joules and if we just kind of round this up, this will be uh, 5,100 joules of work. Okay, so uh, C is the uh, best answer for this particular problem. And it, it turns out that we actually did not need the time for this particular problem. In this uh, next homework problem, we do have a bit of a theory related question. And uh, in this kind of question, uh, we need to figure out in which of the following would a person do the least amount of work. Okay, so for uh, all four of these options, uh, just like the previous problem, we can calculate work as being force times the distance. And uh, we can change the force into the force of gravity times the distance, which is the same thing as uh, mg times the height. And for all these problems, I guess the mass is going to be 10, G is going to be 9.80, and the distance that we're covering is roughly 1.2. So we simply just can't use a formula to figure out um, what the magnitude of the work will be. Uh, we have to examine each of the four uh, options and see what's happening. Okay, so for options A and B, we're both dealing with lifting, and the mass is the same, the distance is the same. So let's just kind of read the problem and see what's happening here. And it turns out for option B, um, we are going past a vertical height using a ramp, right? So uh, I would say option uh, A takes more work. And this would be less work. Okay, so we can eliminate option A. Uh, if I look at option C and D, we're pushing and dragging um, a 10 kilogram box um, you know the same distance of 1.2 meters uh, but the key difference here is we have a smooth floor and a rough floor right so the smooth floor will be uh, less work I'll say less W and this will be more work All right so if we just compare just the pushing and dragging cases alright so we can eliminate uh, option uh, D and then if I compare um, options B and C uh, generally pushing is gonna take less work than lifting all right, so when you're lifting, you have to use your legs and you have to move the object up into a vertical and cover a vertical distance, but you're pushing along a smooth floor so there's no friction. So uh, option C would require the least amount of work just because pushing requires less effort than actually lifting something. Okay, so that's the answer for, uh, for that particular question there. Let's uh, take a look at another theory-based question. And for this next question, a change in kinetic energy is equivalent to which of the four options? Okay, so for this problem, we are going to work with the work energy theorem. And the work energy theorem states that energy is conserved. So what that means is energy at the beginning equals to the energy at the end. And the energies that we need to consider at the beginning are the potential energy, the kinetic energy. We also have work done. There's energy due to friction. So all those kinds of energies are uh, definitely need to be considered at the very beginning. And at the very end, you just have uh, kinetic energy final and, um, and your, sorry, you have your potential energy final and your kinetic energy final there. Okay, so... Um, if we're dealing with kinetic energy, a change in kinetic energy, we just need to look at the uh, kinetic energies 
uh, in, involved in this particular case here. So uh, let's just get rid of the potential energy here. Let's get rid of the potential energy there. And uh, let's also uh, just get rid of the uh, friction here because generally uh, if the question doesn't tell you that there's friction involved, we can get rid of the friction there. Okay, so we just have our kinetic energy at the beginning plus the work equals to the kinetic energy at the end. Okay, and if I isolate for work, work is equal to your kinetic energy final minus, and then all I have to do is bring my initial kinetic energy over to the right hand side, and I get kinetic energy at the beginning. Okay, so if I go ahead and just continue writing here, work is equal to, all right, so when you have your final kinetic energy and you subtract your initial kinetic energy, this is actually a change in kinetic energy. Right, and sometimes I might write uh, kinetic energy as just Ke. So this equals to a change in kinetic energy because you're taking your final kinetic energy and then you subtract your initial kinetic energy. Okay, so um, since uh, we we know we now know that a change in kinetic energy is now equal to work. So that's uh, so option A would be the best case for this particular question here, and this is coming from the work energy theorem concept. Again, let's take a look at another uh, theory-based question, which uh, is uh, related to the work energy theorem. So the work energy theorem means that energy is conserved. So that means the energy at the beginning equals to the energy at the very end. And we've got to figure out which of these four options would best describe the work energy theorem. Now, this is very similar to the previous problem that we just did. And... Um, um, Basically, for this particular case, we want to look at all four of the options and see which of these actually make the most sense here. And um, uh, I would say that if we're looking for our work here, and uh, let's just get rid of the friction because the question doesn't really have any friction here. And uh, if I just go ahead and, um, you know, uh, let, me, let, me get, let me get rid of the potential energy at the beginning and the potential energy at the very end. And if I go ahead and isolate for this, I have my kinetic energy at the end and then I can subtract my initial kinetic energy like I did in my previous problem, and then I have a change in kinetic energy there. Okay, so we know from the work energy theorem, work can be equal to a change in kinetic energy. Okay, now depending on the problem, uh, we might also have a situation where there is no kinetic energy at the beginning, there's also no kinetic energy at the end, and there's no friction. And then what we're now de uh, now what we have next is that we have our potential energy at the beginning plus the work equals to the potential energy at the end. And if I solve for work in this case, um, I have my potential energy at the end, and I can subtract my initial potential energy at the beginning. In this case, I now have a change in potential energy. So I'll just say a change in um, PE, because I'm taking my final potential energy and I'm subtracting my initial potential energy. Okay, so another uh, scenario that we could have is work is also related to a change in potential energy. Okay, so um, yeah, we can, have, we can have definitely different variations uh, that uh, come out of the work energy theorem. And if I really look at both of these uh, cases together, we're, what we're really saying is that work is really a change in energy. Okay, so uh, kinetic energy and potential energy, they're both forms of energy. So work is really a change in energy based on the work energy theorem. Okay, so option A would be the best case uh, option for, uh, the, or the best answer for this particular case. Now that we've uh, talked about the uh, work energy theorem, uh, let's go ahead and apply it to a few problems now. And in this next problem, I have a 150 kilogram roller coaster, which starts at position A, and it passes the crest of a hill at 15 meters per second. So that's my initial speed there. And for this problem, I want to find the speed of the car at point B at the bottom of the hill, and there's no friction. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this problem here. So let's go back at point A. And since I'm given my initial speed of 50 meters per second, what this means is I have kinetic energy at the top of the hill. Okay, and because it's at 24 meters above the ground, we also have some potential energy. All right, so we have kinetic energy and potential energy at point A. 
Now, when I get to point B at the bottom of the hill, I want to say that there's no potential energy because uh, we're at the bottom of the hill. There's no height. And uh, we also want to find the speed of the car at point B. So uh, it definitely has some kinetic energy. Okay, so these are all, um, um, we, we need to consider all these factors uh, before we can find the final speed at the bottom of the hill. And there's also, there's no friction. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the work energy theorem here. And the work energy theorem states that energy is, is conserved. So that means the energy at the beginning equals to the energy at the end. So in this case, the energy at the beginning is really at position A. And the energy at the very end is at position is at position B. Okay, so we did state that we do have potential energy. We do have kinetic energy. Um, we're also going to state that there's no, um, there's there's not going to be any friction, right? So uh, the question literally states that there's no friction. So we can get rid of uh, the H. There's no friction, and there's also uh, nothing being mentioned about work. So we have to consider the potential energy and the kinetic energy at the beginning of the problem. Also, there is no potential energy at B. So I can just cross all these out. And uh, we also need, we do have kinetic energy at the very end because we need to figure out the final uh, speed at the very end. All right, so these are the energies that you have to consider. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this all out. Potential energy is really MGH. Kinetic energy at the beginning is really one half M your original speed squared, and that's gonna to equal to your kinetic energy at the very end, which is equal to one half mass times the speed squared. So we'll say VF all to the power of two. Okay, and we'll notice that we have masses um, in all three cases here, so we can just cancel out the masses here. And then we can now plug in the numbers here. So G is gonna be 9.80. And the height, well, the question literally tells you that we are 24 meters above the ground. All right, so that's going to be at 24 plus one half, and now we need the initial speed to the power of two. All right, and initial speed in this problem is going to be 15 meters per second. Okay, so I can write down 15 all squared equals to one half, and I need to figure out what the final speed is at the very end. So VF squared. All right, so now we've got to solve this particular equation here. Okay, so uh, if I go ahead and calculate this, 9.80 times uh, 24, that's going to be uh, 235.2 units will be joules, uh, times 1 half times, 1 half times 15 to the power of 2, that's going to be uh, 112.5, and that's going to equal to, um, okay, so over here uh, we just have the um, 1 half V squared, so 1 half uh, final speed all squared. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add all these numbers here. If I add uh, the 235.2 plus 112.5 and 347.7, and that's going to equal to uh, 1 half VF squared. If I want to get rid of this 2, I just take this number here and multiply that by 2, and this was the uh, 695.4 equals to VF squared. And then finally, you just take the square root of both sides. And if you square root both sides, you finally get your final speed at the very end and you get uh, 26.37 meters per second. And that is your final speed at position B. Okay, so if we go back to uh, this problem here, uh, we've got to find the uh, speed at position B and we're saying that your final speed over here is gonna equal to 26.37 meters per second. Uh, so clearly your speed is actually uh, increased um, from position A because you, uh, you're going faster as you go down the hill. Okay, um, and then the other follow-up question for this particular question was, um, for this particular problem was, um, if the mass of the roller coaster is increased by adding a, pa uh, adding a passenger, how will the speed at point B now compare to your answer from part A? Okay, so we're saying that the speed increases now. Sorry, we're saying, sorry, we're saying that the mass uh, is now increased, right? So let's just write that down. The mass is being increased. Okay, so we know that the energy at A equals to the energy at B. And from part A, we concluded that we had potential energy plus we had the kinetic energy. 
and that was going to equal to your kinetic energy at point B. And we also stated that the mass actually would just, uh, we can just cancel out the mass um, in this particular problem. So uh, it doesn't matter if the mass was like 10 or 100 or 1,000. Uh, so you are pretty much canceling out all, all the masses, so it will have no effect. It will have no effect on your answer, so your final speed is still going to be the same. Uh, in fact, your, yeah, your final speed will still be 26.37 meters per second. So uh, since we can cancel the masses, the mass has no effect on the final speed. So we can say that the answer has to be equal to uh, 26.37 if we increase the mass, right? It has no effect. Let's take a look at another variation from the work energy theorem concept. And for this problem, we have a 170 kilogram cart and the rider starts from rest on a 20 meter high incline and we want to find out how much energy is transferred to heat. Okay, so when we're at the beginning, I'll call this, um, I'll call this position A when we're at the beginning there, uh, we definitely have a height, so we definitely have potential energy, but since we're starting from rest, there is no kinetic energy at position A, which is at the beginning. Now, when we're at point B, which is at the very end, we have speed there, right? We have our final speed, so we definitely have some kinetic energy. But since we're at the bottom, since we're at the bottom of the hill here, there is no potential energy. Okay, so these are some of the uh, energies that we need to consider so that we can apply the work energy theorem concept. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the uh, work energy theorem concept right here. So uh, what that means is energy is conserved. So energy at the beginning equals to the energy at the very end. Okay, so uh, we did have the uh, potential energy at the beginning, but we did not have any kinetic energy, right? Um, it was starting from rest. The question also doesn't say anything about work, so we can get rid of the work energy. And then uh, the question is now asking for how much energy is transformed to heat. Okay, so uh, we definitely need to calculate the heat energy for this particular problem. And uh, there is no potential energy at the very end, but since we're given a final speed at the end, we definitely have some kinetic energy. Okay, so if I go ahead and rewrite the formulas now, potential energy is mgh, right? And then minus the heat energy equals to the kinetic energy at the very end, which is one half m times your final speed squared. Okay, and let's just go ahead and plug the numbers here. So the mass now, what was the mass in this problem? Well, the mass was 170 kilogram cart, right? And it's 20 meters above the ground. Okay, so uh, we would plug the numbers as 170 kilograms times 9.80, which is acceleration due to gravity. And the height in this question is 20 meters above the ground minus the heat energy equals to one half the mass, and the mass was 170. And the final speed in this particular problem uh, was uh, 16 meters per second. All right, so uh, 16 meters per second all squared. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need uh, so that we can go ahead and solve for the heat energy here. Uh, if I go ahead and multiply the 170 by 9.80 times 20, um, I get a pretty big number here, so three, 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 and then two, zero, uh, minus the heat energy equals two, and if I wanna calculate my kinetic energy at the very end, um, that's gonna be um, two, one, seven, then uh, six, six, zero joules. And then if I go ahead and solve for my heat energy here, I take my potential energy beginning and then I subtract it from my kinetic energy at the very end. And uh, we should definitely be able to get a good number here. So this will be uh, 11560, and that's gonna be joules of energy. And uh, if you wanna use scientific notation here, it'll be 1.16 times 10 to the four joules of heat energy there. Okay, so that's a very good variation of the uh, work energy theorem concept. And we do have a follow-up question here. Uh, the follow-up question is, what is the average force of friction acting on the cart? The average force of friction. Okay, so um, uh, we know that uh, work is equal to uh, force times the distance. 
and um, you know work and heat heat energy is um, you know related here and the force in this case is gonna be the force of friction times the distance here okay so we know that the heat energy that we uh, calculated in, in the previous question was uh, 11560 joules of energy and now we got to find the force of friction and then we got to multiply by the distance traveled and in this particular problem here um, uh, the cart went down 60 meters right so that is the distance traveled here okay so then if I go back to here uh, we put the 60 in here and uh, force of friction would equal to the uh, heat energy and we just divide that by 60 and uh, we should get an answer of 192.6 repeating and the units for this will be newtons. Okay, so that concludes this first part of the homework video guide on the energy chapter.